YouTube and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. I know it's been forever since I've been making videos, but I'm back. Girl, we have so much to talk about. So, what is a hobosexual? So, according to the Urban Dictionary, a hobosexual is usually a man, a cisgender man, who will do sexual things with you just so he can have a roof over his head and a plate of food. So he'll get into a whole ass relationship because he's looking for a place to stay. To stay. And a, t a telltale sign of a, of a homosexual is that he is unemployed. He is unemployed, so you, my dear sweet angel, are the breadwinner. Now, the first time I ever encountered a homosexual or homosexuality was when I was still in university. So, picture this. It's the year 2011. The sun's going to get in my way. So, it's the year 2011. I'm still a young baby trans. I'm still in therapy. I'm still trying to figure stuff out. Then my therapist tells me about another trans girl. We're going to call her Izzy. Izzy was the life at this point of her transition. She was stealth. So a lot of people didn't even know she was trans. Um, and she liked to keep it that way. So I meet up with this girl. We become instant friends. And she kind of, you know was showing me the ropes, you know, putting me under her her wings. Um, but I think even the healthiest of us and the strongest of us can fall victim and can fall prey to these men. And that's exactly what happened to Izzy. So me, Izzy, and a couple of other friends, um, this was in between lectures, we were playing a pool, having a good time. And then this guy approaches Izzy. We're going to call the guy Derek. So Derek is this tall, struggle rapper, chocolate skin, very attractive, but he is a struggle rapper. So him and Izzy start talking, they exchange numbers. Um, she tells him her tea, I think um, that, that same evening. And he was cool with it. He was like, oh, that's awesome. I've always wanted to to be with somebody like you, you're so beautiful, this, that, and the other. You know the lies these men tell us. So cool, so we're all excited for my girl. My girl's out here, she's about to get herself a man, like, it's all good in the head. They dated for two weeks, two weeks, and this boy is already asking Izzy if he can live in the apartment with her. His story is that he's about to get kicked out, this, that, and the other. They don't want him there, so he's going to be homeless, essentially. Now, Izzy, being in a whole new relationship, um, she decides she's going to help her struggle wrap her out. So to her detriment, she lets this man live with her. Now, back then, we were young. We didn't understand the implications of if you let a man come see in your house and he damages the property, it'll be on your name. It's going to be on your tenant history. You're the one who's going to have to pay for the consequences. Not him. Not Mr. Struggle Rapper. So, you know, my girl Izzy is... You know, doing the whole domestic diva, staying, living with her dude. Um, and they were really happy in the beginning. I will admit, they were really happy until there was, until there were problems. So, basically, um, Izzy's mom was the one who was paying for her rent, her food, um, was paying her tuition. And Izzy was letting this man stay in the house, in the in the apartment that the mom paid for, or the mom's paying for. So Izzy's mom goes missing. She literally goes missing. And understandably, Izzy was upset. She was angry. She didn't know what to do. 
So she wasn't in a good space. Now this coincided with um with Derek's um performance. He was gonna do some performance at a club called News Cafe. Now News Cafe is super super popular. Um it's sort of a nightclub meets restaurant kind of vibe. So Derek has his friends over. They're practicing. Izzy's in the room. She's not eating. She's not leaving the bedroom. She's crying the whole time. So one of Derek's friends asks, you know, what's wrong with um with Izzy? Um, is she okay? His response is, oh, she's off her meds. She's not on her hormones. So that's why she's all whoopy. And I'm like, bruv, this dude cool. So it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. He still has not checked up on his girlfriend. Thursday and eventually on Friday, Izzy's like, you know what? I've been crying and I've been upset the whole week. I'm going to get dressed, put on some makeup, put on my big girl pants, and I'm going to go support my boyfriend. I'm going to support my man at this concert. So she gets dressed and she's headed for the car and gets to the car and tell me why this man is all like, there is no space in my car. So she's like, what do you mean there is no space? You, you told me that, that I was going to travel, I was going to go with y'all. And his response is like, what do you want me to do? Put you in the boot of the car? There is no space. So now she's all upset. She runs back in the house. She's crying and hits me up on the phone. And I'm just stunned. As she's telling me the story, I have to sort of like stop myself from cussing. Because here you have this derelict excuse of a man. Derelict. Derelict with a reprobate mind, living in her house, living in, like, the apartment that her mom is paying for, eating the... Girl, when I tell... Friend, when I tell you that I was on the phone and I was just kind of like, there's no way this man is disrespecting you like this. I Like, I can't. Like, I'm trying to can, but I can't. So cool, fine, whatever. Um, he comes home at like three. They come home with girls. They're drinking. Um, they're having the time of their lives. And one of Derek's friends, <laughs> one of Derek's friends goes into Izzy's room and he has like a plate of food for her and he's all like, please eat something. I'm worried about you. I'm not going to leave the room until I see you eat. So she eventually forces herself to eat. Um, now, during the weekend, they eventually find her mom. So that gets sorted. So at this point, Izzy's feeling like she wants to make up with her boyfriend. I mean, nobody wants to live in, you know, like an awkward living situation or a house situation. Everybody wants to live with peace of mind. So I think this is why she went to go speak to him. So she goes off. She goes into the bedroom. And she's sitting on the edge of the bed. And she's t pouring her heart out and explaining what happened. Why she was not herself. A, B, C, and D. Tell me why this man starts undressing. He puts on his drawers. And then he turns and looks at Izzy. And he's all like... Okay, fine. I'm bored of this conversation. Can you please leave the room? So essentially, I, w I want that to hit you. He is kicking her out of her room. She needs to sleep on the couch. And he's going to sleep on the bed. Girl, like, 
when she called me and told me that. Okay, so before she calls me, she's sat up there looking at this man like, wait, what? You're kicking me out. Um, and he's all like, yeah, I need you. I need you to leave. He picks her up, picks her up like this, scoops her, kicks the door open. Now, the passage in the hallway there, um, tiles. And he does this. He just throws her on the tiles. Anything could have happened. She could have sprained her ankle. Anything could have happened. So she goes into the living room and she's crying hysterically and upset, obviously. So she calls me. I don't know why I'm laughing, but it went from bad to worse in like a second. She calls me and I remember I was like Medea on the phone. I was like, hell no, he's not going to kick you out. I was like, girl, do you, do you want me to come over? I will pull up. I'm glad I didn't pull up because <clears throat> that dude was huge. He was like big show huge. I wasn't about to play those games with my life. So she's on the phone crying, and I'm trying to console her. Tell me why another female. Remember when um, Derek and his friends came over to, well, they came back from the performance, and they brought, brought back girls? Yes. One of them hoes. One of those, one of those hoes comes back, goes into Izzy's bedroom, they have intercourse. He fixes her up a plate. I'm like, it's bad enough that you're using my bed to entertain your females. Now you're going to use my food. The limited food. <laughs> Wow, this, 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 this hobosexual takes it to disrespectful levels. Like, I was, I was in such disbelief, and he didn't only say on the, Mon like, um, he didn't only let that girl stay on the Monday. That girl stayed Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. It was only on Wednesday that Izzy still goes back, and she begs the man, and he's still like, no. At this point, I'm all like, you're going to have to call your mom and, like, we're going to have to contact the landlord to get this bum out of the premises. Now, understandably, she didn't want to contact the landlord because it's going to go on her rental history. So we had to contact her mom. Her cousins had to straight up, up kick that dude out of that place. It was a mess, girl. But the trauma, like it affected her academics. I remember she started going really thin. And I mean, to split your resources with a man who's gonna, who's gonna do this to you. I mean, if he walks into the door with nothing, he's gonna take from you. Do you not understand that? And we have this mentality, just as women, not even only as trans women, but just as women, where we want to save the broken, you know, the broken buck. We want to save the deer. We want to save Bambi. Friend, none of these men are Bambi. None of them are innocent. They have already calculated. You might walk into this relationship with a pure heart and honest intentions, He's walking into the relationship looking at what he can take from you. And he will take. Trust me when I say that. I mean, same thing happened to this other girl. Um, we don't say names here. But her hobosexual, she finds a man, you know, puts him in her apartment. She pays all the bills, lets him drive her car. She pays for the food. So I used to work with this girl, and she was cisgender, living with a homosexual. Girl, tell me why she finishes her shift. 
she finishes at six and she was tra she had like a carpool situation so cool we're all in the carpool situation dropping baby girl off she's knocking she's knocking she's trying to call her man he's not picking up you know why he's not picking up because he has another female in her bed that she pays for that he does not contribute towards sometimes we save these men and we think they're going to be that much more appreciative no they're actually resentful because they feel like less less of a man and yeah it's calculated they come in wanting to take from you but it also makes them resentful so baby girl that i worked for this is gender girl she later, she goes and sleeps over at somebody's house, comes back home, finds out what happened. They get into an argument. He takes the keys of her car, takes her credit card, and takes out the same female that he was cheating on with, and comes back to her apartment. You don't know what he's bringing you. You don't know if he has an STI from from one of these heifers. But this is how these men move. This is how a, a homosexual with a reprobate mind moves. They first conquer you. They get everything they need from, from you. Food, um, accommodation. They get sex from you and they do nothing. And as they sit there doing nothing, they think of fuck shit that they can start doing to mess up your life, to mess up your credit score. I mean, I've even heard stories of girls who um, apply for PP, PPP loans or whatever those loans are called um, just so they can help their boyfriends out. And their boyfriends spend it on other females, buying shoes, going to strip clubs, doing everything idiotic, and then the girl is left with that debt. We as women, whether you're transgender, cisgender, gender non-conforming, we as entities that carry femininity, us as feminine deities that have been placed here on this idiot of a planet, we need to do better. We cannot be playing games with these homosexuals. I'll never forget, there was a show called Transparent. And uh, I think that main character was Mora. So she's visiting a friend, and her friend is also transgender, living with a homosexual. The guy doesn't work. He's kind of, like, oily. And he doesn't contribute to anything. And he was out here telling Mora, like, what she needed to do in terms of surgery. And I'm all like, boy, please stay in your lane out here telling, are you going to finance this surgery? So Mora then tells her friend, listen, friend, you deserve better than this homosexual. If you're going to, if you're going to live with a man, he needs to a contri at least contribute. I mean, Girl, some of us are hypergamous and are looking for men that are going to take care of us. But at the very least, he needs to contribute. He needs to be paying half of those bills. Simple. And he can't be telling you what to do with your transition. And a man who doesn't work, honestly, the devil does find use for idle hands. So can we please, in big 20, 20, 22. Not play these games with homosexuals. Let's just all say no. Let's divest from the homosexuals. Let's divest from the DL men. Let's just move away from them because we deserve better. We're beautiful as transgender women. We're beautiful as cisgender women. We're beautiful as feminine entities, blessed. We are blessed and we deserve so much more.
but it starts with you believing it. Friend, I love you so much. Don't you dare start dating a hobosexual. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. And if you enjoyed this video, please show me some love. Like, comment if you have an experience with a hobosexual. Please tell me. Girl, I want to hear that tea. <laughs> Alright, bye.